Hey yo, what's up doers? I'm your boy Happy Chappy. Welcome back to another Minecraft episode. Look at on this one, we're going to be doing the 20 things that you guys should know how to do in Minecraft. These are going to be core things. I pretty much use every single one of these things in almost all of my Minecraft worlds. I don't think there's a single one of my worlds that I do not go without using absolutely one of these specific things in general. There are specific things in this world too as well that I use almost every single day, every single build, regardless of what it is. And today we're going to go over those things. We're going to cover everything from timers, storage, we're going to go over mob transportation and item transportation, auto farms, flying machines, and auto generators too as well. And we'll even go over a few fun things that you can do with your friends in order to have yourself a good time in Minecraft. And once we are finished, we'll even have a world download for you guys. So you guys can go over these things, learn how to do them, learn how they work, and start to incorporate them into your worlds. Now... Pretty much everything that you see me build in Minecraft so far, especially on my series, involves just core mechanics and core farm builds and core, 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 core. Now, let's get into it. First up on the list is the hopper clock. Now, I know exactly what you guys are going to say in the comment section. I can already hear it. Mm, it's a little hopper clock right there, isn't it? We know. There's a sign for it. <laughs> Got it! <laughs> With these hopper clocks, you are pretty much going to be able to do any type of timer, any type of anything in Minecraft. You can hook these up to pulse extenders and get all kinds of sorts of good things happening. But basically all this is, is just two hoppers facing into each other with a comparator signal coming out that redirects however many blocks that you have in here. And once it gets to the end, as you can see, the redstone signal transfers over or the redstone block anyways transfers back and allowing you to have basically any sort of redstone signal wherever you want. So if you have a farm where you need to get like a villager or a zombie or a pillager or something to go up and down, this right here would be a good thing to use or good thing to know. There's all kinds of other ways that you can create clocks using comparators and repeaters and all that sort of fun stuff and pulse extenders and but for now core this is the core clock that you need to know how to do and you can pretty much do it two ways and put it on almost every single one of your builds in minecraft next one up on the list is going to be the item sorters now this is a tileable design say what a tileable design i'm not sure who came up with this thing you guys will probably shout it out in the comments too as well and we can all figure it out together but basically all it is is a comparator that recognizes a signal that is in a locked hopper and basically all you do is put four items in the hopper here that is pointing into the comparator place in 42 of whatever item you want to sort out into the chest below you here and you basically have yourself an item sorter so now any item that passes over through this chain of hoppers whatever item is in this first slot here will get recognized and then transferred down into your chest below i was saying this is stackable it is tileable okay so we have our two items here we just load them into the chest as you will see each item gets loaded into the desired chest that you have locked here and we are good to go. Now if you don't know how to do this, you need to know how to do this. So in the world download, you can learn how to do this. Storage silos. Now there are multiple ways that you can build these things, but I only use specifically two different designs and the main one here is this bulk one. This one is fantastic for things like stone and other sorts of things. All it is is just a simple, very simple redstone signal contraption. So all it is is comparators coming out from each hopper, recognizing what is in there and then lighting up however many blocks you have full of the items. And the other one here that I use is an individual one. So as you can see, all you got to do for this one is just come down to your single lower chest here and it doesn't matter as long as you have your item sorter or whichever else loaded up to the top this will stay sorted your lights will tell you how many items that you have in this chest and all you have to do is come to this one single one here and constantly collect as you can see once you do start to take blocks out this lower chest will start to get refilled on its own and thus always having whichever items you need you're eventually going to need them everybody needs to know how to build them and like i said on a redstone level very very simple very simple shulker box loaders and unloaders now everybody knows that feeling of having a box a shulker box specifically full of items that you absolutely do not want to sort or you do not want to put away and oh my goodness you usually end up with like four or five or six of them anyways on at a time so the next one on the list is going to be the shulker box loader and the shulker box unloader specifically too as well so this one here all you have to do is put your desired material in the top get yourself an empty shulker box 
load it into place and immediately this is going to start filling up with whichever material that you have in the chest up here that you want to load your shulker box with. Once it gets loaded up with its full or full amount of materials anyways, it's going to get pushed over, sent down into this chest, where you will end up with your full shulker boxes full of whatever materials that you want. And believe it or not, when you are done, it will even load up another shulker box for you. So that way you can just sit here, let's say you have to load up a whole bunch of stone or concrete or something for a bunch of builds. This would be the perfect way to do it. So you just load up the lower dropper here with whichever item that you do want to fill. Place the first one into the dispenser of the system there, and once it gets full, it will just cycle through, repeat itself, and you get left with your full shulker boxes. Okay, and the next one up on the list is going to be the shulker box unloader. So all you would have to do for this one is similar to that one, just come over to the top here, place your full shulker boxes into the top chest or the top dropper, dispenser, sorry, whichever one you want. You can press the button to start the system if you do not have a shulker box already or the system is not already running and activated. But once you do get a box in there, as you can see, it will start to pull all of the items down. Once the shulker box gets empty, the piston will fire, pushing it over to this direction, dropping it into this chest here, which will give you all of your empty shulker boxes, and then you are good to go. Now you can obviously hook this chest or this output up to an item sorter if you would like, and then send everything off and down to your storage system, storage room, whichever you wanna do. But these two combinations here, one being the shulker box loader, and the other one being the shulker box unloader, you could definitely increase the efficiency of your builds or your major large scale projects just by having these two simple things here. If you were to put say an ender chest in the middle of the two of them and keep them both in the same spot, you could both unload and load up your bulk materials all in one spot without ever having to keep a chest on you. Next one up on the list, I put in here just as a little, just as a little fun thing, as a little fun thing to have anyways, it's going to be a TNT launcher. Simple as that. So if you were building a Minecraft base or you were building something where you needed to say mine something out or get something out of the way, I mean, you could play a big major prank on your friends if you just hooked up some, let's say a whole bunch of, I don't know, and have some good fun with your friends. As you can see, the height and distance on this launcher is absolutely incredible. The only thing you don't wanna do with this system is spam, because it is dangerous, but as you can see, you can dig a hole all the way to bedrock if you so chose. Be careful with that in the world downloads. Okay, actually, and skipping ahead a little bit, it's gonna be the TNT duper. Now, for some reason, I'm not sure why, I'm not sure how, but Mojang, after so long, has not patched this thing. I don't think they're ever going to. But if you had an intention of somehow digging a hole into the ground, or let's say you wanted to hook this up to a flying machine, which we will show you in a little bit, you could definitely have some fun with this. Oh boy. Just, just, just be careful with these things too as well. TNT is dangerous. Very dangerous. Now, if you want cheap trades in Minecraft, everybody wants cheap trades in Minecraft, you're gonna have to know how to cure villagers and cure it in an efficient way so that you don't die. So what I've added into the list here is my very own personal villager curing station. Now, this thing used to be, used to be great, but now it is, it's perfect. It's quite literally perfect. And that is because of a certain subscriber that figured out that if you just leave the zombie in the minecart here, everything is good. Basically how this thing essentially works is all you have to do is just drop your villager in place using a minecart or whichever system that you do want. Once he's in place here, as you'll see, he will take up whichever trade that you want him to take up. And once you do have this specific trade, all you have to do is lock it in, raise the zombie up. You wanna make sure that you're on hard for this, so that way you get a 100% transfer. Don't forget the roof. Once he does change, all you have to do is hit him with a splash potion, a golden apple, 
wait for him to change and once he does change back as you can see we've got ourselves our discounted trades now i didn't lock these in so that's why i changed from channeling we do have the discounts just make sure you lock in your villager and once you have your villager cured or it's at its desired discount you can repeat this if you would like to so you just expose them to the villager or the zombie one more time but once you have the desired discount like for instance a one emerald book for a blast protection too. All you have to do next is just hit the button, send your villager off to his desired location, and you're good to go. Repeat that with as many villagers as you want. So drop another one in. Once he gets his trade here, all you, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. You just have to expose him to the zombie. Once he changes, thing, golden apple. Once he's cured, send him off on his way. Everybody needs to know how to cure zombies, and I made it insanely simple and insanely easy for you. You're welcome. Next up on the list is going to be the Fast Furnace. Now, every world, every builder needs this, especially if you're going to need a lot of glass for a lot of things. There's two ways you can build it, but the better one is going to be this redstone one here. So all you have to do is just put a switch on the end here or remove these. And as you will see, ta-da! We get all these furnaces burning at the exact same time, filling at the exact same rate too as well. And that goes for both the coal which you can see is already loaded up and the materials that you load into the feed chest here so if you have a build where you're going to need lots of glass for whichever you're going to do okay the fast furnace is definitely something that you need to know how to do because just, uh, this is boring loading these up one by one by one why would you do that when you can just simply load everything into these chests here like so and become a rich, 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 rich Minecrafter. Look at that thing. If you were to have, say, 10 or 12 of these all in a line with their with the gap wherever you need to put them for the repeaters, you would have a constant, constant flow of whichever materials you need coming into these chests here. So fast furnace, definitely something that you need to know how to build in your worlds. Item transportation. Gotta understand it, gotta know how to do it, gotta know how it works. With the new blocks in Minecraft, you can also set them up so that way they can run along the sides here and load whatever items you have into the hoppers that are below them, which is a cool thing the community figured out as well. And then, I mean, using whichever methods you can, move these things around, get them going, and get your items over to whichever item sorters that you have in the game. I mean, if you have a massive storage system with lots of items that all cycle into one thing, which I'm about to create in my Minecraft series if you haven't watched it, you could definitely have some fun with these things, as you can see. And to go perfectly along with the item transportation thing in Minecraft, you should also know how to move mobs around too as well. So as you can see here, we have two specific methods set up. They are constant, they are non-stop. The only time it ever seems to slow down is when one guy tries to walk the other direction, but eventually they make their way through. No problem whatsoever. This one here, which is a corner design, is a never fail always works never slows down as you can see no matter what these guys try to do there's just no stopping there's just no stopping the flow of this thing anytime i need to move mobs around or get mobs into the sky these are the two specific methods that i use right here especially this one this one i use on the pillager farm where i needed to bring four tunnels of mobs into one direct location and get them up a tunnel this is the design here that i used in order to get that done so moving mobs around definitely something that you need to do or need to know how to do in minecraft now next thing you need to know how to do in minecraft is create a dog killer a dog grinder an xp grinder so whenever you have a dog that is tamed with your name or with a name tag on it as you can see whenever he gets to a certain mob specific mobs in the game especially the ones that are hostile towards you as long as you have them fall down from a specific height the dog can actually do all the work for you and you can reap the rewards by collecting the XP from these things now this had stopped working for a little bit in Minecraft Java but as you can see I'm in Java 1.16.2 I believe right now and it still works just fine you just want to make sure that your dog is standing in the minecart but yeah in survival just make sure you're staying in the minecart XP dog grinder Definitely something you need to know how to do in Minecraft. Next core thing you need to know how to do in Minecraft is create a flying machine. Now this is the simplest method here. You can repeat this on the other side and then use it to just kind of go back and forwards or do whatever you want. This specific method that I have set up activates. 
So when it's set to the night cycle like this on the daylight sensor, this activates every time it switches day to night. So if you wanted to set up an automated bamboo or sugarcane farm, this would kind of be the setup that you would want to use right here. It's simple, it's straightforward. Like I said, with the daylight sensor set on the nighttime there, if we just switch to nighttime, as you can see, the system fires and then comes back. You can make this as long as you want. You can have it go way out there if you would like to. And then if we switch back to day, as you can see, it fires again and we have ourselves a working daytime or night cycle shifting thing flying machine. So if you wanted to create, like I said, bamboo sugarcane farms, that is what you would set up right there and need to know how to do. Next up on the list is going to be the cobblestone generator. Now, mining can get boring. Nobody likes to mine, unless you're mining for, you know, diamonds. But if you have a massive project that requires you to use some sort of stone or smooth stone or whichever, a cobblestone generator will get you there in no time. So this is a simple build that you just set up. All you have to do is just stand here and you've got yourself a winner. Cobblestone or stone is always there for you to mine. You never have to worry about it. If you were to use a silk touch pickaxe, you would get stone from this as opposed to cobblestone. But yeah, massive builds. Let's say you need some materials in order to line a build or get the outline or the shape of a build. Cobblestone generator is what you would need. And to go perfectly along the line with that one, basalt generator. Same idea. You just got to use ice instead of lava with some soul sand underneath. Now you do have to tuck some minecarts under there in order for it to grab the materials fast enough. But as you can see, same idea. So you can use this to get all the basalt that you need, which you can then turn into polished basalt and you are good to go. Next up on the list is going to be a auto trash dispenser. Now this is very handy, especially if you have a wither skeleton farm or let's say a farm where you just want to get rid of a specific item, especially like the stone swords. I don't know why you guys always make jokes about it, but bleh. so if you wanted to set up a specific way to get rid of items fast, this, like I said, is how you would do it here. So it's just a dropper with a redstone signal coming out from it that dispenses all of the items that come into the hopper above it into the lava below it for you to never ever have to see it again. Now this design over here is kind of like a super one. So let's say you had a whole bunch of items that you wanted to get rid of. Okay, this one gets rid of it very, very, very rapidly. Keeps up with it in no time. You can use this same design and the same technique too as well to dispense hopper items quickly out of your farm. So let's say you have a gold farm where many, many items are coming in fast. You can incorporate this into your system in order to get the items out of there in rapid time. Now the question you're gonna ask is, well, why do you have trap chests on there instead of regular chests? And it's as simple as this. Let's say you're walking up to here and you wanna get rid of something really quickly. If these were regular chests up here, as soon as you dump the item in here, so let's say you just had, th as soon as you would have put that item in there, it would disappear and then start to take out the next one too as well. So the reason why we use the trap chest is let's say we accidentally put our sword into the chest. We have, n we basically, as soon as we close this and reopen it, look at that. We still get a chance to save our sword from the dispenser before it takes it and puts it into the lava there. Next up on the list is going to be the charcoal generator. If you have an automated tree farm with TNT where you have lots and lots of logs coming in, okay, this would be a way for you to generate charcoal and never have to look for a fuel source again in Minecraft. And basically how the system works is every time you burn a log, you get a piece of charcoal out of it. But as you can see, we can burn multiple logs with just one piece of charcoal. So you can see by the flame going down here, and every time you do burn a piece of log, the charcoal ends up in this chest here, which will automatically feed the system, okay, with the charcoal, but generating more charcoal for you to have for your other builds. So like I said, if you have a tree farm and you need a fuel source, this right here is ideal for you. If you set up three or four of these, and like I said, load them up with logs, just from a double chest of logs, this is how much charcoal you get out of the system so far and we're not even done burning all of these out yet next up on the list is going to be the concrete generator everybody likes concrete they're nice and bright they're nice and colorful this sucker here will allow you to constantly farm it you can even afk farm it if you would like to now the way this system works is all you have to do is load up your inventory with something that you will just basically fill the space 
So like torches, just use a stack of torches and put them in here and then place a stone pickaxe in your right hand and whichever concrete powder you want in your left hand. Load the rest of your concrete powder up into the chest up here. Step into the farm. And then what you're going to do is you're going to place your concrete first and then start to mine. Once you have done that, all you have to do is press F3 and T. And you have yourself a automatic concrete generator or a concrete farm. Like I said, all you need is the powder and you can sit here forever. To the right of where we are standing, we have, well, we can just stop this. To the right of us, we have our droppers, which are filled up with all of our stone pickaxes. We're always going to be constantly dispensing some of them to us, so that way whenever this one does run out, we'll instantly pick up another one and continue on mining. This dropper here above us is filled with our concrete powder, which always keeps our left hand full and replenished. And all of our output stuff ends up back here in this bottom chest. So if you need concrete and you need it for a lot of builds in Minecraft, the concrete generator or the concrete whatever, this is definitely something that you need to know how to build in your worlds too as well. Next up on the list is going to be the automated crop farm. Now this is as simple as this. You have a villager that picks crops all day long. Okay, whenever they start to get full, he will harvest them, put them into his inventory. And then you have a secondary villager here that is halfway down a hole within sight of this guy but a single block away like a full block away in between them you have the minecart here and whenever these guys try to trade with each other what ends up happening is because of the mechanics of the minecart with hopper it instantly picks up potatoes or whichever this guy's going to throw to them whether it be potatoes or carrots and they end up in this chest down here now let's see if we can get this guy to simulate so you can see, once this guy decides to throw his potatoes to this guy over here, they all end up in the chest, and you have yourself an automated crop farm. Now this simple mechanic is basically fail-proof, as you see, always bounces off this back wall here. People say that when he bounces like this, he doesn't trade, but I mean, he just doesn't have enough crops in his inventory. No chance for these guys to breed as well too, because there's only one bed in the farm at all times, so you'll see here it should fail. Bammo. Okay, and the next one up on the list is going to be how to load mobs or how to load entities. Now, a lot of people seem to have a hard time with this one, but as long as you understand the basic mechanic that if you have water pushing an entity towards a corner, as you can see, their hitbox kind of, you know, overreaches the corner of where they are standing. So now there's two ways you could do this, okay? You can have the water push into the corner and you manually pick up your villagers or you can set up a dispenser below you with just a simple button beside it and you can automatically pick up your villagers for you. Now this is a fail proof way. Sometimes if you do have issues with it, all you have to do is trade this block here. Okay, for a wall block like so and as you can see it pushes the villager a little bit closer to the wall here and again, no problems, no issues whatsoever. But that is going to do it for this episode, you guys. Now, that is 20 things that you should definitely have in your Minecraft world. As I was saying in the intro, pretty much everything that you see here, apart from the, you know, TNT launchers, I have in every single one of my worlds, one way or the other. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? I hope you guys enjoyed. We have another one of these videos coming in the pipeline, too, as well. And, uh, yeah. Don't be afraid to use your imagination when incorporating some of these things into your builds because without your imagination, without any inspiration, this, all of this is useless. Useless, especially in a game like Minecraft. But again, if you guys did enjoy, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Check out the Minecraft series too as well if that is something that you guys are into. If you want something a little more than build tutorials, thank you so much again for watching and I will definitely catch you guys on the next one. Peace.